Hello, my name is Mandolin Royal, and today it's a brand new beginning of my season of science. So we're going to go ahead and call it. And this is feed that I just picked up from Kraut Creek up in Greenville, Ohio. And I picked up a brand new, no special bag, custom order of American Breast specific formulations for their starter feed. And I'm going to do a grow on 50 chicks. 25 of mine and 25 from Chase over at Recreational Homestead up in Michigan. He wanted to get in on this scientific deal as well. So real quick though, this is going to get pretty crazy this season with everything I'm hoping to teach. This is their 17% layer feed because my adults were due for feed and I figured if I'm going to change it up with the babies. Let's go ahead and change it up for the adults. So when I look at this label, that is pretty dang complete and specific. And it's better than what I was given them. Um, and I'm still gonna top dress this with the Fertrell Breeder Supplement. As you can see, Fertrell right here. Amazing products from an amazing company and I'm not paid to say that. I'm saying that free of charge because of how awesome it is. Those supplements are also in the breast chick starter. And looking at this, you can see right off it's 23%. And after 24% protein, they can't even utilize that and it comes out their backside as extra stinky poops. So you wanna stay below 24% protein when you're feeding these guys out. The other thing, lysine, and methionine, however you say that, those levels are absolutely critical for the first two weeks of growth because that is what will set the stage for their rate of gain going forward. If you miss it in those first two to three weeks, there's no way to recapture what their genetic potential was going to be. I'm going to go ahead and say that right now, and I hope I set it firm enough for you to understand the nutrition they receive when they come out of that incubator, when they hatch out of those eggs, that will set the stage on if they're going to be able to reach their genetic potential. They're only going to grow as good as what you feed them. And meat bird feed for these slower grown heritage type birds, it's not going to cut it because meat bird feed, that is for birds destined to be in the freezer before 10 weeks of age. It is not formulated for longer grown birds. So the reason we're doing this custom blend to try this on for size is because there's nothing else on the market that is a ready-made, perfect nutrition for what we're doing with these birds. And I'm gonna come out with a whole bunch more knowledge and a whole bunch more information as we go through this trial. And I'm gonna have notes and comparisons of what I was feeding before because the one thing that's staying constant is our genetics. And with how long I've had them and how smooth everything has been going, I did hear Jeff say that if there's anything funny hiding in my genetics, this is going to bring it out. I'm not expecting anything too crazy. Neither is Chase. But we'll see. So I'm going to go ahead and get this unloaded and start filling feeders. And this is just the first start of a long series of videos as we do this trial but I am absolutely going to show you guys a clip of what this feed looks like because the way that it's ground that also matters a lot so more on that here in a second so it is worth noting that it does have the easy pull string on the upper right hand side on the front of the bag which is true of most feed bags where you just get a hold of that loose one and pull it. And then you can dump it all out. Easy and one handed since my other hand is obviously holding my camera. <laughs> but I want you to look at the size because this is not my first time buying a milled type of feed. And my number one complaint and the number one complaint from the chickens was that it was way too powdery. But look at that. 
not much powder at all. Now, feeding instructions for feed like this is you don't want to see any more than 10% left in the feeder at the end of the day. My feeders are not exactly de designed for that. They're bulk 50 pound feeders. But for the sake of finding what their actual uptake is for feed, I'm gonna start measuring it out based on the number of birds in the pen. And with them being adults, they should be receiving a quarter pound each. So I'll overshoot that by 10%, pour it in, and see how much is left at the end of the day. These guys, they don't free range. They have their pop doors to go out to their runs where there is spotty forage, but not full time forage. So that makes nutrition really important to us just because of that, because free range does provide a lot of nutritional opportunity for them to go find what it is they need. But I'm gonna go ahead and keep unloading by showing you this. This is right. If you're getting a mash or cracked grains for your feed, that's what it should look like. If there's too much powder, it's not gonna be quite right. Now the birds are naturally gonna cherry pick, going for the bigger stuff first before they start getting into the rest of it because that's just the natural way that chickens will eat. That's why you don't wanna give them the opportunity to cherry pick every single day because they're not gonna get the mineral aspect. That's what those fines are is the added minerals. And that's the bulk of your B vitamins, vitamin E, all that stuff that makes up the rest of the nutrition that the whole grains don't have. Well, in this case, they're not whole grains anymore. They've been cracked and opened up. And I'm gonna have to double check the grit supply here so that they can digest this stuff efficiently because if they don't have the right grit, it's gonna throw off their digestion. That's another important consideration. And while we do have crushed limestone in a lot of the runs, I don't trust them to go pick up the right size bits on their own, so I'm gonna supply that better on the side as well. This is night and day different than anything else I've ever tried though. Just looking at the particles. This is beautiful feed. All right, back to work. So I noticed a little problem. <laughs> As I was feeding out the chicks from Chase, this is a one pound feeder and this milled chick starter does not flow down into the bottom and I constantly had to shake it and refill it. So I went to our nearest little farm store and I picked up some of these trough style feeders so that I can better measure out the feed that they're getting and make sure that it's a constant supply that I don't have to continually shake down. So how I'm measuring, I've got my handy little scale here, and we are already two pounds and five ounces of feed in since they arrived Wednesday. We're on Saturday, there's 25 chicks. And everything I put on this notepad is gonna get transferred over to a spreadsheet so that we have much easier to view data as this goes on. So what I'm doing is I'm taking an empty feed scoop, putting it on the scale, and then I'm gonna zero out that weight. And then I take my other feed scoop. Now, see how fine that is? That is four chicks. This is the 23% starter blend. And I'm gonna pour that in. I'll get some more and pour that in. And I will notate how much I'm putting in and then I'm gonna transfer it to the feeder. I'm gonna give that to the chicks, and when it's empty, obviously I'll refill it. And then I'm just gonna log how much they're getting for that batch. Now tomorrow is the first weigh day. When these chicks came, I had hoped to weigh them upon arrival, but they were cold, 
they were stressed and they were starving. So for the sake of the birds, I went ahead and set them up and got them situated. And I delayed that first weigh in until their hatch birthday, which will be Sunday. And then from there on, we'll get our growth data because it wasn't worth potentially losing some with that delay. I'd rather have everybody survive. And right now we're at 100% survivability. Everyone's doing fantastic. And there's not one single case of pasty butt, which is cool. I love it when it's easy. <laughs> but I'm going to go ahead and keep doing what I'm doing. And I'm going to swap out that feeder to those long trough style ones. And truth be told, I did receive that advice to go ahead and do that. And I didn't. But it wasn't explained that the way that the feed holds together, that it was going to lock itself in there. And that's because of that range of uh, particulate size. Think of it like little interlocking building blocks. And that's what's preventing it from falling through to the bottom. So it's definitely worth noting that if you're feeding a milled type of cracked grain mash, Use a trough feeder. Don't use a gravity fed one because it might not actually do the gravity part. <laughs> a crumble and how consistent that size is, that'll fall through fine. But this type of feeder is not designed for this type of feed. So let me go ahead and keep going here and getting these guys situated. So the chicks from Chase are pretty well through what's in this feeder but I still want them to eat that so I'm just gonna scoot it over and then I will grab the new and improved one and I was able to fit two pounds and seven ounces into this trough style and it's a different shape than what they're used to so we'll see how this gets eaten down. And I have a pee pad, puppy pee pad underneath because that'll let me know how much feed I'm losing without it getting mixed into the bedding. And I've got to change that every two days so far. But look at that little baby running right over to see what I'm doing, but then immediately going back to the feeder it's used to. So that's why I'm doing kind of like this transitional thing. They are going through a quart of water per day. Once they empty this before a day's time frame, that's when I will switch to a one gallon drinker. These guys are looking real good though. They're not too jumpy. These are actually pretty comparable to mine so far. <laughs> I can't help but be a skeptic, but as far as mailed in chicks go and how they're growing and how they're behaving, these are pretty spot on to what I would expect for quality. I haven't seen anything out of whack with them. That's great. All right, moving on. I had really hoped to have the exact same hatch date as the chicks from Recreational Homestead, but mine are still in the incubator and they'll be right about two weeks behind the batch from Chase at Recreational Homestead, but that'll be all right. It'll sort of streamline things for me as I go through the data collection aspect and give me a little bit of a stagger so I'm not having to do all the work on the same day. So this will work out just fine. Fertility was fantastic. And this is gonna be a fun season with lots of data, lots of educational potential while we see how the feed influences what we can expect for growth. So feel free to like and subscribe. It's gonna be a, a bit to get through and this is gonna be a months long little adventure.